What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. And man, isn't this funny, guys, how eventually everything comes full circle? If you live long enough, eventually, if you have the right morals and the right values and you know it, Eventually, everything comes back around full circle, and now these cats over there in woke Hollywood, they're going to have to start eating their words. They're going to start eating their words, but they're not going to eat them and say they were wrong. They're just going to say you were right the entire time. Basically, that's what's happening here with Bob Iger. You can see this headline on Bounding in the Comics. A Disney CEO, Bob Iger, admits company's recent output featured an overload of woke content. Creators lost sight of what their number one objective needed to be. And of course, Bob is going to once again blame other people. He's never going to take the rap for himself. That is what Bob does. He's the chief excuse officer straight up. Okay, I made a video about that. I'll link it above if you didn't check that. Yeah, this cat is just full of the excuses and he's full of finger pointing. It's somebody else's fault. It's not me, the CEO. I had nothing to do with this. Oh, it's the creators who lost sight. You know, it's hilarious. When you sit back and think about any big major company, they always have a couple of things that they have that kind of govern the business. They have their core values and they have a mission statement and they usually go hand in hand. And, and if you work for one of these companies, you know the core values and you know the mission statement. All right. You can usually recite it by hand. They give it to you in the little employee handbook when you start. And so, yeah, it's funny how this guy is saying, well, they lost sight of what the objectives were. All right. Well, whose fault is that? Is it your fault for giving them the wrong objectives? No, I think that the creatives knew exactly what the objectives were. They were on target. They were right over the target. Oh, yeah, we got to be woke. OK, we got to push the DEI. We got to push all of this stuff to get our ESG store scores up. Disney added woke ideology into their company's mission statements a long time ago. It's baked into everything they do. OK, so, Bob, you can lose this. All right. They knew exactly what they were supposed to be doing with their whole not at all secret gay agenda. That lady came out and said that on a freaking stream to, for Reimagine Tomorrow. And she was giggling and laughing about it. Oh, yeah, I'm doing this and this and this. She was overjoyed with it because she was nailing. Oh, man, they love me. They love me over here because I'm doing exactly what they want me to do. Not at all secret. Not secret at all. Yeah, we're doing this in the wide open. So, I mean, come on, Bob. Like, what are you talking about? So, quit blaming the creators. Oh, they lost sight of what their objectives needed to be. You know, they just lost sight. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. They didn't lose it at all, all right? Those objectives come from the top down. Everything that they were doing came from the top down. That's you, all right? That's you and all the executives at that company. Bob is tripping, man. But, yeah, it's hilarious, man. Now this guy is sounding like us, all right? He's stealing our material. We've been saying this stuff, Bob, not you. This is our stuff. You know, Bob trying to be a YouTuber now. <laughs> Real talk, man. That's probably the best way you can make money off of Disney right now. Because you sure as hell can't make it in the box office. Bob needs to start up a YouTube channel. You can't make money in the box office off Disney. You can't make money on Disney Plus off Disney. Oh, you might as well go ahead and start a YouTube channel and start talking shit about your company. And then you'll start making some money. It's, it's hilarious, man. But yeah, let's go ahead and check this article out. In a seeming expression of corporate humility that more than almost any that came before it in human history remains to be seen to be believed, Disney CEO Bob Iger has admitted that the House of Mouse recent productions focused far too heavily on social messaging and not enough on actually entertaining audiences. Again, man, this guy, it comes full circle, folks. It comes full circle. The toxic fans were right. We need a T-shirt with that, that statement on it. The toxic fans were right. Uh, the current steward of Disney sink and ship made this admission, speaking to the New York Times, uh, Andrew Ross Sorkin, as a part of the outlet's 2023 Deal Book Summit, an annual event where the aforementioned reporter hosts public interviews with a number of notable individuals from across the world's various industries. Amidst a general discussion with the CEO regarding the current state of the ever-changing movie industry, Sorkin eventually moved to ask Iger what he believed might be a political question. Yeah, it's funny. I saw this entire interview um, and we didn't get to watch it. We were all going to talk about it on WDW Pro's channel on his live stream on Thursday, uh, but we ran out of time. I suggest everybody go and watch that. I think that that interview, his interview uh, with this cat, uh, uh, Sorkin, is very, very interesting. It's a very interesting eye opening. All right. But you can see Bob Iger in this entire interview. This dude is a stuttering prick. He can't handle it, man. 
This guy got him on the ropes left, right, and center. And Bob is like, shit, man, I don't know how to answer that question. And he starts getting pissed. Even at the very end, where the man reaches out to shake his hand, Bob didn't even look him in the eye. Yeah, man, yeah, whatever, bro, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> like, it was like one of those handshakes. <laughs> Bob didn't want nothing to do with this dude after that interview, man. Go watch it. I swear to God, it's, a, it's hilarious. But he says, yeah, we were talking about environmental, social, and corporate governance investing earlier this morning with Chase Bates, uh, CEO Jamie Dimon, uh, began Sorkin. Part of what happened while you were gone from the company was a number of films that were greenlit that people were describing as woke, woke characters. And keep in mind, who greenlit these? Okay, these were greenlit by Bob Iger. All right. Movies don't get greenlit and then released the next year. These joints take a couple of years to develop at the very least. You know, you got to get your script together. You got to get the uh, actors. You got to make sure you got them lined up. You came to, oh, yeah, the actor can't make it. Okay, we got to get a different actor. You know, they set these schedules, you know, years in advance. So, yeah, all of these films that came out, these were all greenlit by Bob Iger. Yeah, and he's going to sit up here. Oh, well, you know, it's the people that were doing this when I was out. It's hilarious. But he says, yeah, they were describing him as woke with woke characters. He goes on to talk about the whole DeSantis situation, the you know, the Disney world, people with swastikas and blah, 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 blah. OK, let's get to what Bob Iger was talking about. So here's what Iger had to say. The Disney CEO then explained, let me start with the content and your comment about woke characters. Our primary objective in creating content as a company, except ABC, of course, which is to inform, is to entertain. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. But that's not what you do, Bob. Uh, whether it's sports, whether it's Disney, whether it's Marvel, make things that entertain people. And the good news is that there's a marketplace out there that demands entertainment. It's a fantastic business to be in because of that. Uh, turning to address the actual substance of their recent content, Iger asserted, I think what has happened over a period of time and was building and building and maybe it reached a peak of some sort while I was gone is that creators lost sight of what their number one objective needed to be. So he admits that, yeah, it was building and building, but he never stopped it. He never slowed it down. And he's trying to say, well, it peaked while I was gone. I wasn't here when it peaked. No, bro, but you are the one that kickstarted the entire thing. And yeah, maybe you stepped away for a little smidgen of time. But the reality is Bob Iger was never gone. No one's never really gone at Disney. Bob Iger was there the entire time, kicking it in his same office that he held while he was a CEO. He never left his office. And so, yeah, this is just all a bunch of excuse making. Yeah. And, you know, it was when I was gone that all of this stuff got crazy. You know, and that the creators, these creators lost sight of what the objectives were. Yeah, again, man, Bob is lying. Bob is making every excuse in the book. This man will never take the rap. He will never admit it was me. It was my fault. I did this. I admit it. It was my fault. I am going to step down and give this job to somebody else. That's what I'm going to do. He's never going to say that. All right. He will always duck. What is it? The dodgeball duck, dodge, dip, dive, dodge. He's going to do that until the end of time because this guy has no uh, he has no balls. In my opinion, he can't own up to his mistakes. He can't just say, yo, I'm messed up. I blew it. OK, damn, man, I can't believe I dropped the ball on this company, you know, and then I set up poor Bob Chapek to take the heat. You know, I feel like a piece of shit right now. You know what? I, I, I'm sorry, everybody. You know, that's on me as the CEO. That's what a real leader would do. He would take full responsibility and accountability for the situation instead of just saying, well, you know, it's these creators. Yep, it's creators. They messed up. Not me. OK, blame these guys over here for losing sight of what the real objectives are, as if he didn't set the objectives himself. This guy's full of shit, man. Often when we entertain and we've entertained as a company over the 100 years we've been in business, we have entertained with values and with having a positive impact on the world in many different ways. I use Black Panther as a great example of that, just in terms of fostering acceptance or the movie Coco, which Pixar did about the Day of the Dead, he continued. I like to be able to do that, entertain, and if you can, infuse it with positive messages that have a good impact on the world. Fantastic. But that should not be the objective. Bob, you're, you're lying. Okay. First, you're stealing all of our content and all of our material, all right? You're stealing our material. This is what we say about you, all right? Yeah, entertain. I've said this. Entertain, and you know what? Messaging needs to come in four, five, six layers deep, all right? On the surface, this is just an entertaining movie, and that's it. We're not here to preach. We're not here to promote. We're not here to sell you on an agenda. We're not here to club you over the head with a sermon. That is not what we're here for. We are here to entertain the masses, 
And yes, we can absolutely put some positive messages in there and get people to think about things. But at the end of the day, the movie has to be entertaining. But see, the problem is, Bob, is that your creators, okay, your creators weren't doing any of this. And one of the biggest reasons that your creators weren't doing any of this is because you were hiring woke ideologues. You have nothing but woke ideologues permeating throughout your entire company. Not just the whole not at all secret gay agenda lady, okay? But all of the people that, like, for instance, that Kevin Feige hired to write his films, direct his films, everybody. That's where it starts. It starts with your creators. Yeah, absolutely. He's 100% right. But they were hired by Kevin Feige. Feige hired those people to write this trash. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to talk to Feige about that? I guarantee you he's not going to talk to Feige about it because Feige is like, bro, you told me to do this. What you talking about? We had a conversation, Bob. You want me to send you the email chain where we were discussing? Yeah, we're going to make sure that we hire X amount of women of color, X amount of you know directors of color, writers to write this content, people that are not fans of this material. You don't remember that conversation, Bob? I guarantee you Bob has that. There's an email chain somewhere. That's why he can't fire Kevin Feige, to be honest with you. Kevin Feige would be like, oh, you firing me for this? Yeah, let me kick these emails out there to the public. My lawyer going to be talking to you, buddy. Just a, just, a, just a big liar, man. Dude's just a liar. When I came back, what I've really tried to do is return to our roots, <laughs> which is, uh, remember, we have to entertain first, the returning Disney executive concluded. It's not about messages. Again, if your story can have a positive impact, so there's that. And I've worked hard since I've been back in reminding the creative community who are our partners, our employees, that that's the objective. And I don't really want to tolerate the opposite. So there's that. Yeah. Now he's saying, oh, yeah, I'm not tolerating this stuff. I don't tolerate this over here at Disney. Yeah. Tough talk, right? This guy's talking tough now coming from a dude. I mean, you, you, I will never believe that this cat did not know what's going on. You will never get me to believe that. He could say it a million times. That the CEO of an entertainment company was unaware that the entertainment was going off the side of a cliff. That this thing had just gone completely off the rails and it just got super woke with all kinds of messaging. I had no idea. Oh my God, it's only since I've returned. And now that I've now that I'm back, oh, we gotta return to the roots, folks. I don't know what you guys were doing under JPEG, but it stops right now. <laughs> it's like, dude, what are you doing? Again, this guy has no sack. He has no spine. He just won't admit he was wrong. He just won't admit, hey, you know what? Players fuck up. Okay, I messed up. I, I got to do better next time. All right. He won't admit it. It's just, it, it's sad. It's sad. It's a sad state of affairs when the head of a company, a big million dollar company is a wimp. It's soft. Again, uh, weak men create hard times, all right? Just keep that in mind, folks. Weak men create hard times. If you want to know what's going on with Disney right now, that's what's going on with Disney right now. Anyway, folks, you guys let me know what you think about the excuse machine, Bob Iger. It's just hilarious, man. This guy is terrible, and he's just making himself look worse. Every time he opens his mouth, yeah, they asked the question, WDW Pro asked on that live stream, hey, what would you, or somebody asked, uh, what would the uh, PR for Bob Iger uh, tell him? It says, stop doing interviews. Shut up. Don't say another word. All right. You're just making us and the company look like complete idiots. All right. That's basically what's happening. But you guys let me know what you think. Jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and opinions on that. And thanks for watching. See you next time.